Hi there! Once again, it's me, Jennifer Vanderbeek of ScrapsOfLife.com, and welcome to the Week 16 Return to Creativity Update. Today is Sunday, April 25th, <laughs> and I have a much better update this week. I do. Um, I have now completed the first 23 pages of the uh, Sammy coloring book. I am actually not sure. I haven't come up with a title, like an official title for the coloring book. It's just been the coloring book. So I just realized like in this moment that, yeah, I should probably give some thought to that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm up to um, 23 pages complete. Um, I think, how many did I do this this week? I think I did um, about four, three or four this week alone. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling so much better about it, just in general. Um, I have figured out a couple of things about the program I'm using to create this in. Um, and, you know, for those of you who know that I've been doing, you know, various levels of art and, you know, illustration for quite some time, you're like, uh, you don't know your own programs? Let me explain. So, um, <laughs> let's just put out right now that Adobe is pretty much the main player when it comes to creative softwares. And there are other um, uh, big, com big names out there, but Adobe is like the top. And between just general knowledge and working in the printing industry, um, you know, I had exposure to the different options out there and Adobe was always the one that was the go-to. Now, that being said, Adobe products used to be ridiculously expensive. I mean, we're talking, if you, if you couldn't qualify for like the student discount, if you were just buying a single user license for one program, say Photoshop or InDesign or um, Illustrator, those are kind of the, you know, the big three for, for static graphic design and, and layout. Um, you were spending over a thousand dollars for just that single product. And that was not including like major updates, you know? So many years ago though, they went to a subscription model and a lot of people bitched about this. However, it allowed you to access the full suite, which is like 20, 30 programs all told, um, for, you know, very, you know, for probably about $50, $50 a month or so. And suddenly you're going from paying $1,000 for a single program to roughly, you know, six, $700 a year all told, um, I think. Let me do the math real quick. I know that that was the number at one point in time, whether that, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, six or seven hundred dollars, depending on the exact amount. Um, yeah, and that made it a lot more affordable and a lot more, um, you know, in reach for small creators. And so it was a good thing. Now, not everybody was a fan of this. Some people did not like it at all. And I, you know, they, they, they rebelled against the subscription model and, you know, to each their own. <clears throat> Excuse me. Froggy in throat. So that was a whole brouhaha. And, um, but at the same time, it was, I think it made it a lot more affordable when they were still like <clears throat> pretty much the only game in town. Like I had, um, when I started doing my web comic, um, back in 2007, mm -hmm, long time ago, um, I would do everything, you know, traditionally by pen and paper and then scan it and clean it up and just do like nominal cleanups in um, Photoshop Elements, which Photoshop Elements was a consumer level product that at the time, I want to say it was like 50 or 60 bucks just for the standalone product. Um, I think now it's something like 90 or 100. Um, but it was also what I learned to use for digital scrapbooking. And so it, you know, it was very functional. It was, it did a lot of the things in a very user-friendly way 
it was a great introduction to the product um, except when I went to put my first collection together make it into a book and I needed to do the cover well print standard is CMYK might be getting a little technical but you know just roll with me here the version of Photoshop I had the Photoshop elements only supported RGB which is fine on screens it's it's but it's not print ready it's not what can be used for print and even though there's more <laughs> there's more letters involved in CMYK um, than RGB so you might think if if you know nothing about this you might think that there's with more options if you if you think like back to um, like ratios and probability it's like the more options you had the more multipliers you had kind of thing I know math again not a not a fun subject for a lot of people but so you would think with CMYK which is cyan magenta yellow and black the K is black um, that you would have a whole host more of options than you would RGB which is red green blue not so not at all actually there's a lot more um, options with RGB because uh, there's a light uh, light and shadow kind of plays in and it's a whole thing but anyway so there's millions more colors available in RGB spectrum um, than CMYK and that can pre create some problems so what you would do is if you had a file created in RGB and you tried to print it on a CMYK commercial printer or even later on a digital copier that worked with the CMYK you know inks or toners the colors would shift and you'd end up with some weird stuff so knowing this I knew I had to do something in order to get it to CMYK and so that was you know that's why I had to upgrade to a full Photoshop so that I could output the design correctly for print ready so when Creative Cloud and, and the subscription model came apart came about I was like all for it and that was great while I was using the programs regularly and this was everything from you know I used InDesign when I laid out the um, magazine that I, I was helping a friend with um, with her 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 project to create a quarterly um, I think it was quarterly uh, magazine to help promote her business and other and other um, small businesses um, in that creative sphere and I used Illustrator for um, a game design project that I did for one of my illustration clients and of course I used Photoshop quite a bit and I loved using Lightroom um, to edit my photos for when I was doing blog posts for my blog or other uh, companies blogs when I was on design teams things like that um, I used Premiere Pro to edit videos I used Muse to create my um, websites um, you know there and then there's all all sorts of things goodies that I didn't even get into but I had access to them um, and that was good while I was consistently using it but <laughs> kind of bringing this back to to the now to the what's been going on um, when I stopped creating content when I stopped creating um, product um, or, or being so productive um, when I stopped taking illustration jobs for the most part I mean I, I did a few things here and there over the last couple of years um, but when I when all of that slowed down and or stopped I was paying $50, $53, I think, by the time I canceled it, um, a month for access to these programs that I wasn't using. And in looking at my budget, I started, I started to think, okay, this just, this is, this isn't responsible. This isn't feasible. Um, and they don't offer standalone products anymore. It's pretty much the subscription model or nothing and I had been with them so long that I didn't have to worry about there's been some brouhaha I saw online recently about people canceling their creative cloud subscription and being charged for the rest of the year and yeah that sucks it's a matter of reading the fine print I had been with them I, I mean I'd been part of the I'd been using creative cloud for 
many, many years. So I wasn't locked into something like that. Um, the first time I thought about canceling it, they offered me a, oh no, if, if, you, if you'll stay on, we'll give it to you for, you know, like $29 a month instead of the 53. And I'm like, okay, fine. That I can justify because I was still hopeful that I was going to be using it. Um, and you keep all of your files. You retain all of your files. It's just in order to open them in those programs, you have to have an active subscription. That's the whole thing. And, but in the meantime, other products have come into the market. And I started to look around and started to try and see what was out there. Um, especially this year when I was like, okay, I want to get back into this, I want, I don't, you know, video editing, for instance. Well, Premiere Pro has a lot of features, but it also routinely crashed on me. And even with a brand new computer, even with, you know, I had issues with it. And I'm like, you know, it's, maybe it's too much. Maybe it's more than I need. And there's all sorts of open source programs out there. For years, people have used GIMP instead of Photoshop. I never really, or was GIMP Photoshop? Yeah, and Inkscape was for Illustrator. I use some of those. Um, my cookbook, What to Feed Your Rating Party, the comic book cookbook for gamers, that was done in, I did not use InDesign back then because um, couldn't afford it. <laughs> it was pre-Creative Cloud. Um, I used um, Scribus, I think, was the program I used. And yeah, and it, it works. It's fine. It got the job done. Um, and it was all open source, but things like GIMP and Inkspace, really, I wasn't, I wasn't as comfortable with them. They weren't as intuitive to me. Um, and it's just all, you know, what, what you're comfortable with. And I could have gotten comfortable, I guess, with them, but I never did. But, so this year, in anticipation, or maybe past the end of last year, beginning of this year, I had started to look around for options. And I actually did find... And this is a very long-winded answer to the, what are you talking about learning how to use your program? This is me, folks. Um, <laughs> welcome to my channel. I tangent. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I had been looking around for options, and I found some programs that were becoming highly recommended among the artist and content creator community, had good reviews, but the best part was it's $50 per program. And I think I even got a special on some on, on some of them. So where, you know, I kind of got a discount or something. Um, I'd have to go back and look um, like as a bundle or something. But one time purchase includes all updates. Well, doggone it. I mean, so I can spend I can spend what I would have spent over three months and get everything I need right now and that's it no more recurring charges no more you know for my budget the way it is now looking ahead when I'm trying to be more economical as I try and kind of <laughs> dig my way out of the now now realized as ADHD dopamine seeking <laughs> debt um all that stuff well, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So that's what I did. And so now I'm using, again, really long answer. Sorry about that. No, I'm not sorry. This is, this is my channel. I can do how I want. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't apologize for being yourself, right? At any rate, um, so I have been using um, a suite of programs called, oh, and I just lost the name. Dog on it. Um... <laughs> Um, Affinity. Oh my gosh. I knew it was A. I was about to say Audacity, but that's not right. <laughs> no, it's Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. And then for videos, I've been using Hit Film Express. Um, and frankly, everything has been working great. I have been using the Affinity Designer for the Sammy comic book, or coloring book. I mean, don't let me misspeak. 
and it is basically um, an illustrator um, dupe or well no I don't even want to call it a dupe it is it is an illustrator competitor yes let's be more appropriate so it works in vector art um, and I've been getting used to my my pen display my Cintiq 16 and you know kind of relearning or refamiliarizing myself with the process of working in this model and I love it don't don't get me wrong I I love it to pieces but there were some things that I wanted to be able to do that I didn't know how to do thank goodness for online tutorials and videos and knowledge base articles and all this stuff and I had done some research prior to um, using the programs. I mean, I'd done some basic, you know, kind of research before I made the switch. But I'm going to confess something here and now. <clears throat> I suck at practice. Let me be more more uh, specific. I suck at practicing for practicing sake. And this has always been the case, whether it was music, learning an instrument, Playing scales bored me to freaking tears. Give me a piece of music to work on. Um, doing a tutorial, like when I, back, back way back in the day, um, when I tried to learn Inkscape, which is another, is like an open source version um, or, or um, vector art program a la Illustrator. I tried to do tutorials to learn how to use the controls, to learn how to work with, with the, the functions in one ear out the other or eye out the other maybe my brain does not retain information I have learned and, and, and come to come to grips with my brain does not retain information readily that does not have a significant importance to me or um, output I am much better at jumping in feet first and figuring it out as I tread water. That is how, that's how I learned to use a lot of things. That's how I learned to do a lot of things is I am, let me get in there, let me reverse engineer, let me, you know, see what I could noodle out on my own. Let me figure out what's intuitive and what's not. Let me figure it out myself and it will stick so much better. So um, all of this to say <coughs> that I actually took a, sla a small break um, this week from working on the coloring book and did a different project. And you're like, why would you do that, Jen? Why? Why stop the momentum? Well, a couple reasons. One, it was cool, okay? <laughs> Two, and it kind of goes along with number one, um, the new shiny dopamine seeking part of my brain said, ooh. Um, <laughs> it was a standalone thing. And I had a really good idea. It was, it was, it was a challenge um, that a, a TikToker and Twitch streamer that I've begun to follow re somewhat recently. Um, uh, the artist's name is, uh, her name is Meg, and her, her channel is called Meg's Mashables. And she mashes together different animals or concepts or whatever into the most adorable creatures. And on her Twitch stream and on her Discord group, she has um, a Friday Mashable challenge where um, uh, she and the community, they kind of randomly pick, uh, shout, you know, just, just kind of come up with two or three words to mash together into a creature or creation and um, just as a community challenge. And I had started watching her Twitch stream last week and it was mentioned and the words were phoenix mummy and oak leaf and i thought about it for half a second and i sketched something out real quick and then i just i really wanted to draw it i thought it was cute i'm gonna put it up here i think um and, and not only was it nice to take a break from, is it, and it, not just nice for me, but is it good sometimes as general, in general, as a creator to take a break and do something in the same vein, but different because 
hyper focus for me can lead to burnout. Um, I've had it happen before, and that's one of the reasons why, even before I knew about the whole ADHD thing, <clears throat> I knew that it was valuable for me to have multiple interests, multiple hobbies, multiple expressions of creativity, because I know my propensity for burnout, for hyper-focusing to the point of exhaustion. I've done it so many times. And so when I get stuck or, or start to you know slow down on a project, I can shift and work on something else. And that is so valuable to me because it means that I I don't get to the point where I resent the, 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 the one thing I'm trying to do. So there's that. But the other benefit of creating this, uh, this, this, this creature, this little, this little drawing, is that it gave me an opportunity to explore some more of the features of the program I am using right now. In that, I had not done any color work in this. I'd only been doing the line art. And line art has always been my strong suit. Um, I struggle with color combinations. Um, I struggle to get out of the, the obvious and, and, you know, it, it's a struggle. It's something that I need to learn more about. But outside of that, I just needed to learn how, how, how to paint in this program, how to color things in in this program. And I started by using the same tools I had been using to do the line art. And then I'm like, yeah, this, this isn't working quite right and this isn't gonna work for when I need to blend colors together and I need to do this. There's gotta be something else. So I did a quick Google and I came up with um, some, a couple of um, quick YouTube videos. Um, showing how to do it and lo and behold there is there is an easy way to do it in this program that i would not have i didn't grok on my own i knew it was there i knew the function was there but i didn't understand how it was useful in in both so i'm like oh wow so i have learned i gained knowledge and experience with something that i'm going to need when it comes time to do the cover for this coloring book so that i don't have to keep switching between programs also, as part of this, I, um, I wanted to be able to rotate the canvas. And you're saying, well, that's pretty simple, Jen. Mm, yes or no? Be yes and no. <laughs> the one thing I have, um, I guess last year, maybe sometime, I don't know. I don't remember when I had bought um, my my Kindle um, was starting to show its age. My Kindle Fire was starting to show its age. It's it's, it's onboard memory was starting to get you know <laughs> full of just the stuff to run it. I couldn't you know it it didn't have enough memory just to function after a certain point. Um, at least not well. So I'm like okay I need to upgrade and I decided to go with a regular tablet rather than a specific. Um, another Kindle and so I got a Samsung 5e or whatever tablet and and I found a you know um, a pen that would work with it because it doesn't it doesn't play with the uh, Samsung pen which is fine and I was kind of used to being able to pinch zoom and twist and do all that stuff on the tablet because it's touch screen well my pen display the Cintiq it, this version is not touch sensitive which is actually a good thing because it means less messing with with stuff that I don't want to mess with in the moment um, but it also meant that when I was drawing and wanting to like turn the page I was actually turning the entire pen display the entire big tablets and I knew there had to be a better way so I also took this opportunity to find it now there is some limitations with that within the program, but there was a tip on how to make it more functional and I set up keystrokes. So now I could do it without having to freaking move the tablet. <laughs> it's little things like that, but it's something that until it became an issue for me, had I read about it earlier, it just would have gone straight through the brain and it would have been back in the filing cabinet somewhere. It, it would not have, um, it would not have stuck and I'd have and I would have had to go relearn it when I needed it in the moment. So anyway, long and short, 
<laughs> I got several pages of Sammy done. I got this new drawing um, done and colored and I'm really happy. I just, I loved creating it and it kind of, it did kind of revitalize me towards that, this, this, this last push towards getting the last, um, let's see, six, seven, eight, 10 to 12 ish pages done for Sammy. Um, I have of the original drawings I did for Inktober 2018, I have eight left to, to redraw. Um, it was going to be seven, but then I figured out how I could make the other one work. So it's like there was one that just wasn't going to work within the confines of the story I'd built up, but I figured out a way. And then I've got a handful that I need to do from scratch to round out the story side of the coloring book. Because even though this is, yes, it's a coloring book um, and it does not have to have a theme or story, my brain has decided that yes, hell it does. So... <laughs> So yeah, that's that's a thing. And so I need a few more a few more images to kind of round it out. So I think I have somewhere between 10, 12, 15 max left to do. Will I get them all done this week? Probably not, but I'll get doggone close. Um, and that's fine with me. I'm okay with that. Made my made my peace with that. Let's see, the other thing that happened this week. Um I got an idea for how to make my space, my physical space here in the house, more functional for me without losing some of the comfort um, that I have that I've gotten used to as far as like having my little sofa in here and being able to chill and it being not just a workspace but a, you know, a, a, a restful space, my little, my little spot. I mean, <laughs> back in the day when I first had my first apartment by myself after my second divorce, um, I had a two bedroom apartment to myself. And so that second bedroom was supposed to be like my home office or whatever. But what I quickly realized is when you're not sharing your space with anybody else, you don't necessarily need a home office because you can do whatever you want, wherever you want in your own freaking space. So it, it then became like just a, it, it became like a cluttered storage room of all my stuff. <laughs> um, and it became known as the abyss, mostly because there was a hole in the door from before I moved in. And it just, it was one of those things that never got around to being replaced or fixed. And I didn't care that much. It really didn't bother me. But it was, it was roundish and like right at eye level for me. So it kind of reminded me of a porthole. And so somehow my brain went from there to the movie The Abyss with the sparkly butterfly jellyfish creatures that were like aliens and could have been scary, but they were actually kind of helpful and, and cool and stuff. And I decided that that was what the craft room studio, etc. was going to be called. It was The Abyss. It was also a bit of a pit in there <laughs> because everything just kind of got put in there. It was not well organized. And so for several moves... And even into this house, my craft room studio home office was known as the Abyss, where all manner of craft supplies go until they're needed. Well, when I stopped creating as much, um, uh, the last couple of years, the Abyss was less functional for that. It was just my spot to be in. And so for whatever reason, I began to call it just the playroom because I sure as hell wasn't working in here. Um, so it became the playroom, but I never really got used to calling it that. It never fit. And I could delve deeper into the reasons why, but this video is, I'm sure, already longer than it needs to be. So we're just going to gloss over that for the time being. But this week, I had just the light bulb moment knowing that I am getting back to creating, knowing that I am, oh, that's right, I gotta tell you about one other thing. I did a dumb, but we'll get back there in a second. Um, knowing that I'm getting back to creating content and want to do more of it, knowing that I'm getting back to creating work, like artwork and projects, and want to do more of that, it has now become apparent that I need to make the space a little bit more functional. 
This room, because I just looked it up from when we originally measured, is roughly 15 by 17. It's not a it's not a perfectly square box because there's a closet and a fireplace thing, and there's 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 it's bumpy in <laughs> places, um, but it's roughly 15 by 17. It's a big space. Um, but it's not being used, and as you can see behind me, I got shelves on most walls are covered by shelves or something. Um, and uh, But it, it could be used better. Um, my actual workspace is kind of small. Um, I have what used to be my kitchen table way back in the day. That's an Ikea table that seats four more or less comfortably, and it's fine, don't get me wrong, but even it is overloaded with stuff. It's not a big workspace, even if it was empty. Um, I have my desk, which is on the other side of me right now, uh, but it's got, you know, it's got computer stuff on it, and especially now with the pen display, that takes, a, that and the, you know, it takes up a lot of room. I have a sewing table, which is like a two foot by four foot folding table, which is fine when I keep it cleaned off, but again, it suffers from flat surface syndrome, <laughs> just kind of everything piles on. And that's it. I need more workspace. Like, for sewing projects, if I want to cut fabric for sewing, especially if I'm going to make clothes for myself or something, I have to do it on the floor or go into the dining room, clear off the dining room table, which also has flat surface syndrome. <laughs> it's just what happens. Um, so that I can, you know, spread things out to cut them. And uh, yeah, that's, that's not always convenient. And I just, I, I need more space to be able to spread a project out and leave it out. And not to mention, I also need to reorganize the chaos that is on the shelves. Um, so yeah, I have come up with a plan and I've discussed it with Todd who has, who, ah, bless his heart, he always goes along with my harebrained schemes and I am so grateful for that. <laughs> So freaking grateful for that. Um, at any rate, uh, it's ultimately it's going to be to place a, and I did the measurements last night based on, you know, what's reality here. It's going to be about a 12 foot long by two and a half feet deep, maybe three feet. I still haven't completely decided on the depth. Um, work surface across the entire south wall, the 15 foot span um, of my office. I'm going to get rid of my computer desk. I'm going to use the old kitchen table as my desk and um, kind of shift things around. Um, when I was figuring out where things would go, I actually realized I could put another <laughs> Another shelving unit, which will be helpful, and there will be storage underneath the uh, the work surface as well. I'll have some under cabinet um, uh, shelving or cubbies under there, um, as well as access to electricity and all that stuff from what's already there. And this was last night's brainstorm as I was taking a shower and thinking, huh, you know, I've always wished that I had, you know, because... Crafting's messy, folks. Artwork is messy. You either need water for when you're painting or you need to clean up or, you know, just stuff is messy. And it's always been a pain to have to go into another room to wash my hands or get water or whatever. So I said, you know, we had this doorway in my office. My office used to be of the one of the back corners of the house. So there used to be a door leading to the outside and um, then which what was the porch at the, at, uh, at the beginning, I'm, I'm sure, and was then cre uh, turned into a bathroom. Um, we walled, we, we, we <laughs> that door is no longer a door. I don't know what you want to call it. We de-doored it. And it's actually where the sink is now in the new, in the semi-renovated <laughs> downstairs bath. And I'm like, you know, because we haven't enclosed this side of it. Like the side that faces my office is still, you know, like open. You, you can see everything. <sighs> Since there's already water running to that, there's already pipes and hoses and stuff. <laughs> I've decided that we're now going to have, I'm now going to have a sink in my office. And this is 
this is of all the of all the things to get like really excited about. This is this is bizarre, but it's so much more functional. <laughs> so I don't know the timeline on this because we're woefully bad about coming up with an idea and then it's sitting. But I'm gonna try and nudge this along um, as much as I can. It's gonna mean things in chaos for a while, and <sighs> but what's what's news there? <laughs> But yeah, so um, from where I'm sitting right now, the, the work surface is going to be about here, reaching all along this back wall. I have a nice big window that is southern facing, so um, if I want to photograph or film projects during daylight hours, then I can just open the curtains and have wonderful natural light coming in. Um, when I'm recording things like this, I will be able to either have, you know, that work surface behind me or, you know, I, I think overall it's going to be amazing. Crossing fingers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that becoming a thing. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I'm going to have like, you know, about 12 feet take away about two feet for the to allow for the sink area and stuff um but yeah I am I am looking forward to it I think it's going to make the space a lot more usable and a lot more functional and certainly inspiring you know it's, it's still it's not going to be one of those Pinterest worthy rooms it's still going to be me it's still going to be a hodgepodge of all sorts of stuff but that's okay. I'm not, I'm not looking for one of those Pinterest perfect spaces because while I love looking at them, I realize that, no, that is not, that is not what inspires me. That is not what is functional to me. Um, I need to see all my stuff. And I understand that now because I understand, you know, because of coming to terms with the whole ADHD thing and the having to see things, having to have the stuff visible or you forget it's there. Um, and so I'm trying to work within that knowledge and make things functional for myself um, on, on all levels. And it turns out, um, this was a conversation that was um, that had come up uh, not too long ago on um, either a TikTok or, or a Twitch stream of an ADHD creator that I was watching. Um, yeah, the, the, the impetus to change up the space, like rearrange the bedrooms as a child, or which I used to do all the freaking time, um, or your living spaces or whatever, is very focused on that need for fresh dopamine. It's like the, the new environment sparks the dopamine a bit. Um, so yeah, I completely, I completely acknowledge that that's part of it. But I also think that this is definitely the, the, the step I need to take to make this space more functional to support my end goals. So, okay, so the last thing I'll talk about is how I did a dumb this week. <laughs> oh, I did a dumb. So what happened was, um, I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, that um, the local artist collective was kind of revamping itself, restarting itself post-COVID um, crisis, because we are pulling out of that slowly but surely, cross fingers. Um, and I had renewed my membership so that, you know, I made sure I was a member in good standing so that I could submit work for the upcoming show next month, towards the end of May. What I did not do was go back and look at the timelines. I knew there would be a deadline for submissions. I just didn't know that what that would be. And uh, I've gotten in the really bad habit of not checking my email all that often. Yeah. So Tuesday night, I was in the shower and I'd been like noodling around with the idea of what I wanted to submit for this, this show since, you know, since the, um, since I renewed my membership and I had an idea, I just wasn't sure how it was going to come together. And every artist is different. Every, every, every creator has a different process. Mine has always been to work things out in my head, conceptualize it, um, kind of fit things together, piece piecemeal it together in my head so that when I sit down at my desk or, 
you know, set up my easel or something, I go to it and it's done. Um, not quite that quick, but I usually work out a lot of the, oh no, wait, that's not going to work here. Why don't we try this? I do a lot of that in my head and I always have. So when things started to click on Tuesday night, I was really excited. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to go down. I need to look in this bin because I've got this, this, and this, and we're going to do it this way. And do I want to do this? No. And I, I mean, I had troubleshot. I mean, it was rapid fire. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, okay. And then I thought, why well, need to check and make sure what the deadline is? Yeah, the deadline was the day before. Oops. <laughs> Oh, that was totally a me mistake. I've never done that before. I have no, I mean, hmm. Yeah. So my process still needs work. My, 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 my thoroughness still needs work. I've never missed a deadline before. And of course I didn't really miss this one so much as just obliviate that it existed. Um, and just not even ever look at it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was, that was a dumb, that was, that was a dumb on my part, but that's okay. It's okay. No, I won't be in the show, but that's okay because arguably, and arguably, I'm not really sure which one is, but I would say that it's probably more important that I continue to work on the coloring book because we're getting close. We're getting close. Oh my gosh, I've got 23 pages done. I've got, you know, maybe a dozen left to go. Um, it's more important that I continue work on that. Get that finished, have a finished product and get that, establish that for myself that I am able, that I am once again able to complete a project. Cause y'all that's a big thing. That is something that is difficult for a lot of people but it's especially difficult I'm learning for ADHD folks because once the newness wears off, once the idea becomes common, once once the dopamine rush starts to decline, finishing that project is difficult. And it's something that plagues a lot of people with, you know, neurodivergencies. <sighs> Looking back, I see plenty of things that I started and did not finish for one reason or another. Um, but I also know that I am capable of finishing things. I have done it in the past. All I have to do is look at my cookbook as an example, but that took two and a half years, folks. I need to not, <laughs> I, I don't have the time to do it that way anymore. Um, and it's different, different scope, whole different thing. Um, but yeah, I need, if nothing else, I need to prove to myself that I'm still capable of finishing projects without letting them found, flounder, founder, flounder, founder, whatever, without letting them sit, without letting them, them, them collect dust, without, without it being a trudge and a struggle. I need to prove this to myself. And it's also step one in a larger plan that I have that is very important to me. It's very important to me for my life going forward, for my future as a person, as an artist, as a creator. And so, yes, while that art project will get done, that, that, that will happen. I'm almost happy that I didn't know about the deadline because I think I may enjoy creating that more if I'm able to do it in my time, in my way, and without, without the messed up pressure of submitting it to a show for which I know it's going to be juried and it's going to be, you know, before it gets, it's, it, it's even hanging up. And, and then once again, afterwards, you know, they announce prizes and stuff. Maybe it's better that I don't participate in that competitive side of it and create it for what it means to me and be able to share it as part of, you know, my, my process is sharing it as it, as it comes together, which is something that's kind of like dicey in the, in the art world. It's like, you know, you're not supposed to, to, 
I don't know, there's whole, th there's whole things about sharing work that's already been shown somewhere else, depending on the type of show, depending on this, not whatever. Yeah, I think I might like it better this way. And that's not just me kind of putting a, 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 a good face on it. That is, that is a legit, that is legit how I'm feeling about it right now. So yeah. So I might have done a dumb, might have been a ditz about something. And that's not me talking bad about myself. That is just me accepting that, well, that was stupid. I mean, it happens, folks. We all have moments like that. But yeah, I think in the end, it's a good thing because it allows me to focus on what's more important right at this moment. And it allows me to do that project the way I really want to without having to worry about what the local art community will or will not say about it. So, whew, that was a lot. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me. If you did watch this long, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, you know what? I was so wrapped up in getting all of that out, I didn't even ask. How was your week? How have you been? Are you okay? I hope you are. I really do. Um, I am grateful for everyone who watches my videos, whether it's two people or 2,000. Every person who watches my video, every person who interacts, every, every person who even gives me a thought, I appreciate you guys. I really, really do. And I, I hope you're okay. I hope that something I've said maybe made you laugh. <laughs> Even if it's at me. Trust me, I laugh at myself so much. I invite other people to laugh with me. So it's okay. Um, you can laugh at my silliness. It's absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> if you're not okay, reach out, please. Um, you know, I... There's just so much that I'm grateful for, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, hell, I'm going to say it, I'm glad that the last two years were pear-shaped, tits up, just downright difficult, because if nothing else, it, okay, no, I'm not glad, I'm not glad, glad, but I can appreciate them, because it helped me refocus now. It's helping me refocus on what's important, and that's me and my creativity, and and also you. I've always thought of my blog posts, which one of these days I will get back to doing something with the dog on blog, website, whatever. <laughs> but sharing via blog posts or social media or videos like this. This is a part of my creative process. I can do anything I want here in my own office, in my own playroom, abyss, what have you. Oh, by the way, the new, the new space will be known as the Oasis for a variety of reasons. I can do whatever I want, but to me it's not complete if I don't share it with somebody. Sometimes when I was a child, when I was younger, that meant giving it away. Giving it to somebody else is like, ooh, that's cool, here, take it. You know, if somebody showed interest, I offered it to them freely. <laughs> but yes, the sharing, whether it's of information, experience, you know, if I can teach something in this day and age, I mean, it feels like teachers are everywhere. But the teachers that maybe speak in, in the language that you understand might be harder to find. If I can be one of those, fan freaking tabulous. But sharing, offering something that I know or have done or have experienced for someone else to, to observe, to learn from, to not feel so freaking alone from, that has always been a part of my process. And it's not, not all, it's not only so that I, you know, if people like what I do, yes, it feels good. If people don't like what I do, yeah, sometimes it can feel bad. But, but more times than not, sharing leads to positives for different reasons. And so what I share here is not just 
for me. It's for me in part, maybe a big part, especially now when I'm, I'm a small creator. But, but sharing has so many reasons. And if I reach a handful of people, then I'm happy. So this upcoming week, this last week of April, oh my goodness, how are we, how are we nearly four, four months into the year already? Time flies so fast. I hope it's a good one for you. If it's difficult, I'm sorry. If it's a difficult week, know that you have my, my sympathy, my support. If you want a silver lining, we am sure we can find it. But sometimes you just kind of have to accept that shit happens. But it won't always be that way. So whatever your week is, I hope you find time to be creative. I hope you find time to be gentle with yourself. And I'll see you in another week. All right. Bye-bye.